Welcome everyone to episode 27 of the Missing Pieces podcast. If this is your first time watching or listening, as this is available everywhere that podcasts are available, this is a series where I sit down and I discuss my life and Lego and anything else that was on my mind from the previous week. And I'd like to start this episode off as I'm looking at it here with a bit of an apology for looking like a ghost. I don't know what's going on with my camera. I'm using my new setup here and I am like looking super white. I guess that comes along with sitting inside for the last two weeks, which I I guess I would have been doing otherwise. And we're going to be talking about that a little bit. But again, I implore you, if you're watching this on YouTube and this is what you're seeing right now, this might be a great time to go over to Apple Podcasts or Spotify or wherever you can just listen to this and listen while you're doing something else. Do something productive. Clean your Lego space up. I mean, I could take this advice myself. But speaking of podcasts and speaking of places you listen to them, I'd like to read a recent review on Apple Podcasts, which we are up to 88 ratings, which is incredible. Five stars. Every single review is five stars. Thank you guys so much for that. And thank you for taking time out of your day to spend it here with me. I really appreciate you doing that. This is my favorite thing that I do every week. And it's it's just so awesome to have people that actually care about what I have to say and what I'm thinking about. But the review, which is written by Fun Game with like 45 exclamation points after it, says, I've never been one to listen to podcasts. I've always found them to be boring and quite honestly, stupid. That quite obviously changed since I gave this a five-star rating, which I appreciate. Uh, This podcast is about the life and thoughts of Greg, a vlogger and Lego fan. In his videos, he keeps everything at a PG rating. However, with his podcast, he changes. Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. He talks about the times, and he says what he thinks about them. He talks about his worries and the things that makes him feel excited. I like it so much because it shows us who Greg is off-screen and away from the camera. Well, that could have took a turn for the worse, but I'm thinking maybe I should maybe keep this a little more PG because last week's episode, which had uh, the Q word in the title, it got demonetized. I'm like, what? Missing pieces gets demonetized. I think about all the terrible things that exist in the world and what you could possibly upload to YouTube. And Missing Pieces, the lowly old podcaster Greg sits and talks about his life in Lego and anything that's on his mind from the past week gets demonetized. And it's okay. It's fine. I'm going to miss that one or two dollars, but you guys just listen to this is all I really need. And uh, speaking of listening to this, I'm about tired of talking at this point. I love doing these episodes, but the past two weeks, I've literally spent down here in the studio every single day. I've been making uh, live streams every day, multiple hours per time. We're working on things. Today, in fact, I'm going to be finishing up Apocalypseburg, which is just off to the side there. Today's going to be day 15 of doing that. Uh, and I was like, what am I going to talk about on Missing Pieces today that I haven't shared in the last two weeks of talking for probably like 20 to 30 hours? So I thought, you know what? The best thing I can do is, is I'll throw it out to you guys. I made a community post this morning and I was like, I'm going live on Missing Pieces here in a couple hours. Anything you guys like me to talk about or any questions you have? Because I thought, surely you probably didn't want to hear about quarantine or the Q word as we're going to call it from here on YouTube. And you don't want to hear about Chima. You go back to last week's episode and know what we're talking about there. I'm like, you guys don't want to hear about that. You want to move on to something else, right? Uh, no, no, that's, that's not the case. In fact, some of the questions I got, and I think the most of the questions I got were related to Chima and the Q word. So I thought, why don't we just talk about it? Let's let's do it. Uh, Bruce, I think, had the, the best question, or I guess the one that kind of leads into this the best for me. He says, maybe an open opinion on how Lego is helping you and Clark's quarantine be a little better. And I also had another question that was, how has the, oh, the Q word and the C word affected our lives? And the, the answer, I'll answer that one first. Um, not so much, really. As an introvert and someone that just gets a lot of energy and joy from being in my studio here and being in my space and doing what I love to do, which is essentially this, it hasn't really affected me. In fact, if I didn't follow the news at all, which I probably shouldn't, or maybe I should. Uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't even know this is happening. Like I'm kind of in my own little bubble. I probably would have went to the grocery store or Walmart and been like, "Why is this place so busy? Why is everything all ransacked? Where's the toilet paper at?" That would have happened. But other than that, it hasn't really affected us negatively. In fact, it's and, and this kind of goes into Bruce's question: How Lego is helping you and Clark's quarantine be a little better? Keyword: Be a little better. It's helped out quite a bit. Like I've found this love of live streaming again. I not only of entertaining myself by talking to my friends and getting Lego sets built, like we built the tree house, we're building Apocalypseburg, it's like 6,000 pieces. Don't mention that it took me two weeks to do that, but 
I'm actually being more social than I've I've been in a long time. Like we're we're engaging, we're talking. And not only that, am I being entertained? I'm also entertaining a lot of other people out there. Those those uh, streams typically have like 130 people watching them, which is which is incredible for such a small channel. I don't do the streams on my main channel. I do them on a little channel called Brickatech Live. If you want to subscribe and you want to be a part of what we're doing over there, love to have you. It's always great to have new people in the chat. But I get joy out of engaging with with people being a part of the lego community and just like giving a place for people to go and i think i talked about this last week a little bit i like having a place for people to go just just to like sit in and hang out maybe if you want to engage with us or if you just want like somebody to keep you company while you're sitting at home being bored that's what we're doing over there and i, I get a lot of satisfaction out of that so in in that way the the quarantine has is, is helped me in other ways, it's it's made things significantly worse. Like, for example, I have a vlog channel, and I usually document all the things that Clark and I are doing during our days together. And a lot of times, that's like leaving the house and doing stuff. And in this case, we haven't been doing much of that at all. In fact, the only time I've left, left the house in the last two weeks was to get groceries and go to the post office last week, which unfortunately, like at the time, I felt like that was a really safe thing to do. No one in our area had uh, Chima or uh, or anything like that. But now there's like one case and I feel like that's going to be going up. And you have to question like when is going to be the point where you walk into the grocery store, or the post office or whatever, and you're just like, yeah, I don't know if I like this so much. This looks a little, little, a uh, little dangerous. Um, I don't know when that is, but uh, we're probably getting there. I do have to go to the post office this week, unfortunately, because I have to pick up mail. I went through my mail rations. I know people have messaged me and said, I've sent mail out to you guys. It's on its way. It's going to be coming. It's probably sitting there. It's probably piling up. So, And I, I sold something on eBay as well. So I need to get that out, and I need to pick up our mail. I thought about doing it in a hazmat suit or like a pretend hazmat suit just to just to make a funny video or whatever, but I don't know if it's something that I should be joking about. I am gonna be very cautious with going into the post office in terms of touching the door handle, touching anything inside, the boxes, like I'm gonna let them sit in my car for, for a great while, and uh, hopefully we don't have to worry too much about that. But yeah, I need to, I need to keep that alive, I suppose, and I, I enjoy doing mail time, and I wanna keep that series going, as I mentioned before. So in some ways, Chima, and the keyword have helped me with accomplishing goals and things that I have, have wanted to do and that I really enjoy. And in other ways, it's, it's negatively impacted me just like everyone else where you're kind of like stuck at home and you're not, uh, not doing as much as you used to be. And I, w we're going to be talking more about that, uh, later on and like how, how this could potentially affect us now and maybe going into the future as well. But, uh, in between that, I'd like to answer this question that we have here from Mark. Uh, he says, hi, Greg, as it is life in Lego, apart from making slash editing videos and of course building Lego, what do you look forward to in downtime? I know we're living in difficult times, but what do you really look forward to when it's time to switch off? And I thought that was a good question. I think we all have things that maybe we like to do and, and, uh, things that keep us busy, like just to, to turn our brains off and watch something. I know people watch Netflix or maybe you read a book unlikely, but maybe you do, uh, maybe you just watch TV. Maybe you watch brick tech live streams and you're just kind of chilling in your, in your home. And again, I'm not trying to promote myself. Well, maybe I am. If anything, if anyone's going to promote me, I might as well me. And, uh, I might as well do that here. Let's let's thank our sponsors to this podcast, uh, the Brickitect Patreon, patreon.com slash Brickitect. If you want to be a part of our community there where I post exclusive pictures or photos, uh, videos, and do live streams just for those people. Also, group calls where you can interact with me directly. Join us on Patreon. There's various tiers there that can uh, support any budget level, and it really does help the channel out, especially in these days and times of the other C word that we're dealing with. Is 2020 going to be the year of the C words? I feel like it may be, but Mark's question was, what do I look forward to when it's time to switch off? And I, once again, this has encouraged me to pick up another hobby that I've had for a long time that has kind of been forgotten because I deemed it non-productive, but I found ways to make it productive and that's gaming. I have my video game capture cards and stuff and I'm like, you know what, what it be really fun to do is get back into gaming and I could record my gameplay footage, stream that of course too, because again, people are home bored. I might as well entertain you. And I love being an entertainer, apparently. I never thought that of myself. 
I always consider myself an introvert, like I said, but it's way different when you're, you are still being an introvert. Like I'm still here in my studio by myself. It just so happens to be that through this lens and through this cable that runs into my computer that may or may not be desyncing the audio as I'm looking at it here. And if that's happening, I deeply apologize. Once again, another reason just to listen to this. I, I can broadcast myself to the world, and that's been YouTube's thing like for, from day one, at least it used to be, broadcast yourself. And I don't know, I just I get a lot of joy out of that. So gaming is one of those things that I've, I've enjoyed my whole life. It's been like my OG hobby, that and Lego. Like Nintendo and Lego was like me when I was like five to, I don't know, 12, 13 years old. Not just Nintendo, but all of the iterations and Sega Genesis and all that stuff of the world. And in these days and times, we have these these capabilities to to broadcast our gameplay and to play with people all over the world and I came up with the idea since Easter has essentially been canceled with my family uh, we, my nephews and my my brother-in-law and sister-in-law they usually come over to our house for Easter we've canceled that or they've canceled that and my mother and father-in-law they're they're a little bit older and uh, it's not best for them to interact with us in the event that me going to the post office I end up getting the the, the Chima and then maybe literally or, or uh, metaphorically um, pass it to them. So Easter's been canceled, and I, I really miss my nephews. They're my buddies. They're my, they're my pals. And I'm like, why don't we play some games together? So we've been doing some of that. I've been having a good time. Uh, my nephew, Landon, uh, we got into Apex Legends together. I was, I was streaming. We've been streaming Minecraft with Clark, and I've been playing... Just, uh, I think we're playing Blackout, which is Call of Duty, and I enjoy that quite a bit too, even though I suck at it. <laughs> which you'll see a trend here, but we started playing Apex Legends and I've had a lot of fun with that. If you guys don't know what that game is, it's free to play and so many people are recommending that I try it out and play it. Uh, I downloaded it, had a great time. It's a mixture between Fortnite, the, the, the cartoony nature of Fortnite and the fast-paced nature of Fortnite mixed with the, the very, very harsh realism of Call of Duty. If you were to put those two games together and you got rid of the building of, of Fortnite and you got rid of the slow-paced nature and grittiness of Call of Duty, you mix those two together and you got like a pretty cool game there. Free to play. Playing with my nephew, it's like squads of three. So we're always looking for another person. If you have Apex Legends and you want to play with us, that'd be pretty cool. Especially if you have a microphone and stuff and we can communicate. And if you can keep me alive. Because once again, it's I'm not very good at that game, but I think it comes down to practice. And uh, speaking of that, my other nephew, Kyle, the one night we were going to play together and uh, we decided, I was waiting for Warzone to download, which is the new Call of Duty game. And I was like, well, let's play some Fortnite in the meantime. So his friends were playing on there, and I joined up with them, and it was uh, it was an experience. Not necessarily the game, but what happened around the game. First of all, when I come in, he introduces me as his uncle, which I am, but hearing, hearing a kid say, this is my uncle, I all of a sudden felt really old. I'm like, wait, I'm your uncle? Because I always look at us like when they come over to, to the house here, we go visit them, I don't hang out with the adults, I hang out with my nephews, and it's like, I'm... Maybe, maybe, I don't know, someone dissed me on Instagram or somewhere called me Peter Pan, and maybe that's who I am because I never grew up, but I just, I relate to them better, and that's probably why I have a Lego channel and why I'm, like, making videos for uh, kids that are 13 years or older, apparently. It's like, I just relate to them. I like what they like. We're into the same things. I, I, I can talk to a 15-year-old much easier than I can talk to someone that's my age, 35, by the way, but when he introduced me as his uncle, I felt very old. And then that just kind of continued on as these kids are just decimating people in Fortnite and building this stuff. And I'm just like trying to walk around and they're using slang and jargon that I don't even know what it is because I'm a boomer apparently. And I just felt really out of place. And it's weird because I talk to other kids. Like I talk to, uh, you know, people when we're live streaming and people that are teenagers and whatnot. And I don't know if it's just different s styles or what it is, but I really, like, or maybe they change because they're around me. Because when I'm with my nephews independently, everything's cool and like I feel I feel at home and normal. But when their other friends get involved, I felt like a fish out of water for the most part. And I'm curious to see if there's anybody that's listening to this. If you're a little bit older, like me, have you experienced this at all? Is there a moment that you realize that you're old and you're not necessarily young anymore? Like I still feel young. I feel great. I feel like I, you know. Me and Clark, we do our thing together. And it kind of got me thinking, like, after that happened, I started having, like, this midlife crisis where I'm like, how long can I do this for? How weird is it when you're 40 or 50 and you're sitting here playing Fortnite with people that are, like, 14? Is that weird? I'm not a child predator by any means, but it's like, is that weird? Is it weird to relate to those? And then I started thinking, like, damn, maybe, or dang, maybe, sorry, I, maybe I should find some, uh, 
there's the PG rating out the window. Maybe I should find some adults that are into the things that I'm into and like change my style up. But I don't want to change who I am because of the world. And this is going to be advice a text advice for everyone out there. Live your life with no regrets. Don't be who other people think you should be. Be who you want to be. If you're 85 years old and you like playing Fortnite with 13 year olds and they, they call you a boomer, I didn't get insulted, but I, I really felt that way. Um, just do it. Do what makes you happy. Do what you love, especially during these times when you're stuck at home. Now's your time to be yourself. Do the things you've always wanted to do. And that's kind of what I'm doing. I'm, I'm living, living my dreams. I'm trying to enjoy it as long as I can, holding on to that little bit of youth as I'm off screen here. Hold on to that little bit of youth as long as I can before I feel completely out of place. And I realize that all I can do anymore is just crochet in my rocking chair until the retirement home feeds me my dinner at 3.30 in the afternoon. But that is, where is this even going? That is uh, what I'm looking forward to when I switch off is getting into more gaming and stuff. And I've been having so much fun with that. If you want to talk about a little less than PG, I'm doing a little bit of that there. I don't swear mostly, I don't think. Definitely not Definitely not when it's live because I'm, I'm, res I'm trying to be responsible. I know who's watching these videos. But we have some good times and I've been making some highlight clips that just get me laughing and it makes me feel good. Um, just, just like kind of like you, like you said, Mark, just detaching and, and having like a, a, an experience and just, just blasting some dudes, right. Or getting blasted. And just, even when I get killed, I'm having some laughs and I'm having a good time with it. And I think someone commented, I forget who it was. They said, when I watch your, your streams or your gaming, I see you truly happy. And I am. I'm truly happy. I enjoy doing it. So prepared to see more of that. The link's down below if you want to subscribe to my gaming channel. Once again, self-promoting myself. But yeah, I'm having a fun time with it. And Clark's playing Minecraft over there if you're into that. I find that the two most popular things that I play, Minecraft and Fortnite. Two most popular things. The thing I like playing the most, I enjoy Blackout. I really am liking Apex right now. But I plan to do some other stuff there as well. I plan to play some vintage games. I have some ideas for series that I want to do. My nephew's trying to convince me and I know this isn't a gaming podcast, but it is because it's whatever's on my mind from this week. My nephew's trying to convince me to join the PC Master Race, apparently. And he's like, oh, gaming on a console is so terrible. There's so much lag and all this. And I'm in the zone to kind of need like a new computer as it is. I've talked about it in mobile episodes. In fact, you can probably hear my fan right now on this computer as it's about to explode because it's five years old and I have all this stuff connected to it to record this for you. Um... I'm just like, he's like, I, I've built like five PCs. I built it for my friends. If you just let me know like what your budget is, I can get the parts and put it together and all this stuff. And I was like, man, maybe I should do that. Cause I can make that like my editing rig. I'd have to jump out of the Apple, 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 the Apple ecosystem. And I'd have to switch over to like premiere pro and Photoshop and all that stuff. Um, but I could game on it as well. And there's other games that I want to play that you guys might be kind of stoked about. I want to play like simulation games. And there's this game on PlayStation right now that, is I think it's like on massive sale. It's called Farming Simulator 2017. And it's like $12. And apparently you just run a farm. You have like tractors, you've got a truck, you can hire people and stuff. And I kind of like that. It's, it's like the boring stuff I kind of like. Welcome to Missing Pieces. But there's other things too. Like I'd like to play Roller Coaster Tycoon. I want to play that Kerbal Space Program where you try to build a rocket and launch that off. I feel like we could have tons of hoots playing that and there's just all these other like little games like that i've heard of uh civil civilization is a, is a game would be fun to play like a strategy game i like to play these games that get kind of like addicting i also want to do the lego digital designer or stud.io where i pick that up and i try to build things with you guys where um tell me what to build and i try to build it that'd be a cool live stream i want to do draw attack i've got so many things that i want to do so like this whole Chima thing really hasn't affected me negatively. It's, it's given me a lot of time to, to do this stuff, but I do fear that I'm going too hard at this. I tend to go all in on things. I tend to get obsessed with things. I tend to, like, I'm like a comet where I'm coming in, like, super hot on fire, and then eventually just, like, I need to, like, it, I either burn out or I need to burn myself out because it can negatively affect other people. Like, I should probably be spending more time with Mrs. Brickitect. Speaking of Mrs. Brickitect. You guys are getting a little better. I saw 628 likes on the last video. Nine dislikes. I don't know why you dislike this 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 podcast. Like, why are you here? <laughs> Maybe they came in the first minute. They're like, this is absolutely not what I want. But 628 likes. We needed 800. So the progression to get Mrs. Brickitect on the podcast, we went from like 300 to like 400 and something to 600. 
I feel like you guys have it in you, but I'm not going to push it anymore. If you really want Mrs. Brickitect, you have to really want it. And I do question what all you guys are doing watching this. There's, uh, let's see how many views we had in the last one. As of right now, 4,400 views. Only 600 people could be bothered to take their finger over here and just go, Oop, how hard is that? How hard is that? That's what I ask you. The other 3,800 of you were just so lazy, so lazy. I'm kidding. But yeah, 800 likes. I'll keep it open. I'm not going to talk about it. In fact, I had a, a comment here, which we'll kind of go into next after my gaming tirade here from Ben C. He says, thoughts on any movie or TV series that you enjoy that you enjoy being pushed back? If you'd like movies to go straight to streaming like Disney Plus, or is it worth waiting for the theatrical lease? Mrs. Brickitect, 800 likes requirement. Push at the start of the episode. We made great progress last week, but not enough. I agree, but I wasn't at the start of the episode, so I apologize for that. Uh, my thoughts on movies getting pushed back. There wasn't anything necessarily that I was like, I need to see right when it comes out. But this could be like a great opportunity to do something that I've wished for for a long time. And that's that you just get rid of movie theaters. They're not essential anymore. Movie theaters had a place when no one had TVs, no one had VCRs, no one had the technology at their home. They didn't have air conditioning. So you would go to the, the movie theater to kind of do what Mark was talking about, where you just kind of unwind and you'd be sitting in a nice air conditioned movie theater watching this film that you had no access to. But we live in different days and times now, my friends. We have equipment in our homes that is better looking than what you'd experience in a movie theater. Some people have better sound systems than we'd experience in a movie theater. Obviously, the the act of driving to the theater. I mean, there is something to be said about the experience of it, and I do enjoy that. But the act of going to a movie theater, overspending on everything there, including the ticket and the concessions there, if you don't sneak your own stuff in, which was a whole conversation we had a long time ago on Brick Tech Live. And I remember the one guy said he snuck a pizza into the movie theater, which I thought was was kind of fantastic. And uh, we need more people. <laughs> we need more talented people like this in the world, sneaking turkey dinners into the movie theater. But to overpay for that, overpay for concessions, you sit down. Last movie I watched was Star Wars, and I swear there was at least 45 minutes of, of just previews. And I'm like, you should be paying me to watch this movie. Like, I just sat through 45 minutes commercials. You guys complain when you have 10 seconds of pre-roll ads here on YouTube. 45 minutes of commercials, like... <sighs> And then you, then you, the movie starts playing, and then someone sits in front of you, and they block your view, or someone sits behind you, and they're kicking their seat. Someone's coughing Chima all over you from the side. Kids are crying. People are laughing, sneezing, snoring. I don't know. Like, I'd rather just do it at home. And it's like, how about this? And if you want to go, if you still want to make some money, obviously the theaters want to make money, the movie companies want to make money, or whatever, the pr production houses have a movie come out directly to streaming. You have the capabilities. Everyone has Netflix. Everyone has Disney Plus at this point. You still you still want to make money. Make it like a pay-per-view event. $40 to watch the newest Marvel movie or whatever. You could price it however you want. $40. You have a family of four sitting there. That's actually very worth it for them. Plus, you're eating your own snacks, your own foods and stuff. 40 bucks. People would probably pay that, and you don't have to leave your house at all. I would like to see that at like 20 but... You know, I understand they do need to make money. And I'm trying to figure out, like, if there's any other way. But I would love to eliminate movie theaters from the equation. Can, like, think about video game arcades, right? They are done. It's the same principle. Video game arcades were a thing when no one had consoles. No one could get on to Xbox Live or PlayStation Network, play with their friends. You, you congregated in this place and did it. If they did the same thing with video games where the only way you could play the newest Call of Duty game is if you go to the arcade and you can play it there for six months or whatever, and then eventually we'll release it out to home release where you can play it at home, arcades would still exist, but it became very apparent that they're unnecessary, and I feel like movie theaters are the same way. I know this is going to trigger people, and it's going to be a great conversation, which I'd love to follow up on in the next episode, but let's just get with the times here. I mean, regardless of your, your personal stance, you have to admit that you could easily watch a movie from home, but there is that thing where, and I, I like this experience, the same reason I like going to an arcade that doesn't exist anymore, and toy stores that don't exist anymore, like physical places should not, almost shouldn't exist, and maybe with the future of, of Chima, maybe maybe we'll see a change in this, but there's something to be said about walking into a place with your family, 
grabbing that that bag of popcorn you just paid thirty eight dollars for and your your soda that's that's like six gallons and you paid eighty seven dollars for like it's a barrel of oil and you walk into the theater and you sit down and you just enjoy it with your family and you walk out seeing this new movie and having this awesome experience as you go out into the bright sunlight again there's something to be said about that experience and I love that experience but I loved it with an arcade I loved it with going to Toys R Us and sometimes these places just need to change with the times but if you have a monopoly on it and it's like, listen, you want to watch it. This is where you need to watch that. So be it. That's the way it is. But to, to counter this, I guess the other argument is you could always just sit at home and wait two months for it to come out and you rent it for $6 and have your whole family watch it. All 17 of you as you gather around the, the couch and whatnot. You could do that too. But if you want to be at the, at the front end of things, I'd like to see them do more of this. Um, hopefully that answers your question, Ben. That's kind of probably more than what you wanted to, to hear. But I thought that was a good question. Like maybe maybe this will change the future. And I'm also thinking about how Chima is going to change our interactions going forward. Like we are watching. Speaking of movies, we watched Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood the other night, which was a it was an okay movie. I heard all kinds of hype on it. I heard there's one guy I listened to his podcast. He said it 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 changed him. It's like changed his life. And I was thinking the movie would be more about Mr. Rogers' life, but it was more about this guy who was having like a rough run and, and couldn't forgive his family and how he encounters Mr. Rogers because he's a writer and he's doing a story of Mr. Rogers and how Mr. Rogers impacted him. And it was really good. Tom Hanks played Mr. Rogers. He did a great job at that. But the movie was kind of, kind of boring, I thought. Um, but it was it was good. And I'm trying to figure, oh, I was trying to figure out where this is going. In the movie when they, they like shook hands or interacted or hugged or got close my mind, and I don't know if you guys are like this too, my mind went to like, dude, get away from him. You know, like, don't touch don't touch his hands. And I wonder, like, as this is fresh in our memory, is this going to change culture? Are people going to be less likely to, to like, shake hands? Are you going to be less likely to, like, get really close to people? Is, is physical interaction going to come to an end in the same way that video game arcades and movie theaters should come to an end? When you go to the gas station, you grab that pump, because Mrs. Brick Tech did that this week, and she said she wore gloves. Are you going to start thinking about the the hundred people that touched that pump that day and who had what on their hands? It's something you probably should think about, I suppose. It's something that I never really thought about before. But now, like, is this going to be something that we're like, oh God, oh God, that's terrible. I I I, I need to stay in my little bubble here. I'm going to wear my hazmat suit to the post office. I don't know. Maybe we'll be doing fist bumps in the future instead of handshakes. It's kind of crazy. Like, this is going to be a big thing. This is going to be something that, that is talked about for a long time. Just like the people that lived through the Spanish flu of 1918, they probably, that was probably a part of their culture for a long time as well. And, you know, everyone remembered it. People probably knew people that passed away from it. And this could be the same way. But uh, the best thing you can do, folks, is, again, just just stay home. Watch some Brick Tech live streams. Dang, this, this is like one big commercial. This is like going to the movie theater. where um, This is our preview for all the other stuff you're about to watch. Just stay home. Uh, I think what they're the big thing that they're trying to do is is trying to keep people from out, out. It's the curve. They don't want people all to hit the hospital at once. You gotta you gotta blend it out a little bit. We're all probably gonna get it, or a lot of people are gonna get it. You just need to make sure you have access to the hospital facilities and we're not overwhelming them. If you need a ventilator, it'd be nice to have one of those to keep you alive. It's pretty it's pretty scary. So if you don't need to leave your house, don't. Just like me, for example, I probably don't need to go get my mail but I want to. Let me know what you guys think. Should I do it? I'm going to I'm gonna go in very, very cautious. I might even wear latex gloves. I mean, it might not hurt, right? I look like a fool, but what does it matter? I look like a fool every week on, on YouTube. So that's pretty much all I wanted to discuss this week. I was going to talk more about the, the future of, of Chima and how it's going to impact us, but we don't really know how that's going to be just yet. And it's not something that I think we should necessarily speculate on. Let's focus on the positivity and the positivity of the, f the fact that you're home with your family, most likely, which may be a bad thing for you, but it should also be a good thing. Learn learn to spend that time together and to appreciate each other. And maybe if anything could come out of this, maybe we can learn that we don't always need to be out and about and consuming and being a part of the, the economy and, and just being a consumer. Maybe you can just enjoy being at home. Maybe you can learn that I should have some things on hand. Maybe I can cook from home. Maybe we can just be and we don't need to be doing. So that's what I'm going to leave you with this week, guys. Thank you so much for watching or listening to this episode. I hope you got some enjoyment out of it. If there's anything that you would like to discuss 
in next week's episode. I am totally down for discussing. In fact, that's what made up this entire week's episode. I love questions that are kind of open-ended that I can that I can go off on. I prefer things not like what's your favorite theme or what's the top five coolest Lego sets, which I think were both questions that were asked this time. I like the, the big brain thinking stuff that I can take my little brain and try to expand on. Thank you guys so much for your time. I hope you have a glorious rest of your day and we'll see you or we'll find you. I got to get this right. We'll find you in the next Missing Pieces episode.